Hello world and welcome to my first tutorial. If you're a quilter or a sewist or really anyone who works with fabric and has been accumulating scraps at an alarming rate, then stick around and together we will summit Scrap Mountain with these colorful fabric confetti collages. So back in 2013 in the budding era of Pinterest, I stumbled upon <laughs> Anyone remember uh, that website? So I stumbled upon a 2012 blog post written by a talented and bold quilter named Wanda S. Hansen on her blog Exuberant Color, which I'll link in the description below. Back then I pinned it, knowing once I graduated college and was able to return to quilting that I would need it. And boy, friends, did I need it. While she writes that she limited her fabric selection to two inch batik squares, my personal desire for zero waste in fabric usage meant that I endeavored to use any and all scraps available. So let's go ahead and grab all those scraps. To make these collages, first and foremost, you will need scraps. Anything from small triangles, trim from turned corners, ends of strips that are too small for quilting, odd shapes left from cutting out garments, really fabrics of any type and size, as long as they can be ironed. Next, you will need a foundation piece of fabric of your preferred size. So this one is about eight inches by nine inches, but really any size will do, and enough fusible web to cover it. Here, I'm using Heat and Bond Light, but I've also used Pellon Wonder Under and Heat and Bond Ultra. We will be quilting over this, so I do not recommend the Heat and Bond Ultra. In my experience, it gums up the needle and the bobbin shuttle, and it makes quite a mess, but it can be used if you don't mind cleaning it, or if it's the only thing you have. But really, I recommend sticking to the light fusible webs. Finally, for tools, you will need an ironing surface, an iron, and scissors. So now that we've gathered everything, let's start by fusing the web to the foundation fabric. If you have a piece of web large enough to cover the fabric, feel free to use that. I had a leftover scrap from another project, so I chose to piece my fusible web, which is also fine. I've even used small scraps from applique projects to sort of collage a fusible web layer. Still rocking that zero waste mindset. To piece the web layer, I fused the web onto one side of my foundation fabric. Remember to turn your iron on ahead of time to heat it up so you don't need to jump cut like I did here. Once the iron is hot, follow the manufacturer's instructions for fusing your web to the fabric. Be sure to get every corner to fuse it down well. Also be sure you're not fusing it to your ironing surface or getting the web on your iron. When checking for this, be sure to stick your head under the camera to make sure you don't have any gray hairs. Now that I've fused the web to one side, I cut the web flush with my non-fabric scissors and fused the remaining portion to the rest of the fabric. If you're using a single piece of web large enough to cover the fabric, this step is not needed. Just go ahead and iron that big piece of web to your foundation fabric. Once we're done fusing, be sure to trim any overhanging web so we don't accidentally fuse the web to our ironing surface later. Now it's time to peel the paper off the web. Pro tip, if you're having trouble getting the paper to separate, grab a pin and firmly score a line in the paper. The paper easily separates along the score mark. If you're using one piece, you probably won't want to make a large score mark like I did because we will need to keep the paper to use later. I'm not scoring the second piece of paper for this reason, so we'll just speed through several seconds where I attempt to loosen the edges to peel this paper off in one complete piece. We'll set this aside to use later. Our foundation is prepped, now it's time to collage. This is the fun part. So I started with a moderately sized piece for the center. I pick and choose fabrics, cutting larger scraps into smaller pieces as I go. These first few fabrics are leftover cuttings from the ends of strips. I don't really worry about cutting them on a straight line. The angled corners give texture to the final piece and there'll be so much chaos, it really won't matter that the corners aren't exactly square. To place pieces, layer them so they're both overlapping fabric pieces and the fusible web. Be particular with your fabric placement so every piece is at least a little bit on the web and covers other pieces to ensure there aren't any gaps where the web can peek through. If you encounter any bottom of the bin fabrics that have gotten a little crinkled or creased, use your iron to flatten them before adding them to the collage. It'll help make sure everything stays where it's placed and your iron should be close and handy throughout for periodically fusing things down anyways. When I said any type of iron safe fabric can be used, I meant it. This is a piece of polyester charmeuse from a garment project last year. While it is a bit stretchy, it is iron safe and fuses just like any other fabric to the web. 
and it adds a little bit of shine to the finished project. When I mentioned tiny scraps that were too small for quilting, I meant it. Some pieces like this one are off cuts from squaring fabric. As long as it's wide enough to hit the web and cover other fabrics, keep it. Some of these pieces are right around half an inch wide. Once you've built out a good bit of your collage, it's helpful to stop and save your place. We'll do this by grabbing that piece of fusible paper we set aside and placing it shiny side down on our collage. This protects the iron from the web while our collage is still too small to cover the whole iron. Carefully place the iron to keep the faceplate off the web and fuse the web to the manufacturer's instructions. Before peeling the paper, wait for the web to cool. If the paper is peeled too early, it can peel the web up with it, leaving gaps in the foundation. If you have a larger piece than I did, you can pick up and place your iron in a new position to fuse everything placed so far, but if you don't, go ahead and just move the paper around to fuse what you couldn't reach the first time. Keep building and layering your scraps, periodically stopping to fuse things in place. It took me about 20 minutes in real life to make this collage, if you're wondering how long this project might take. The next minute or two is just a quick montage of this collage being built. I'll have a link below if you want to skip that and jump straight to how to finish the piece. Once the last piece is placed, give everything a good press to ensure all the scraps are fused. I like to give mine a good shake to see if there were any spots that I missed, and if nothing falls off, then we're done with the collage. Next we make a small quilt sandwich. I'm using some old green fabric for the backing here because I plan to turn this into postcards. Really any fabric will work, coordinate or don't coordinate to your heart's content. I also use scrap batting and piece my center. I personally don't worry about stitching my franken batting in these. The quilting will be so close that any seams won't be noticed. I don't use any spray based or fusible batting either. The friction between the batting and the two layers of fabric is enough that it really doesn't shift. Just firmly press your sandwich together and take it over to the machine. Not shown was me trimming down the excess to be more manageable for quilting. I like quilting layouts like this in a rectangular spiral. I've also quilted them using a circular spiral and with straight lines. Really, it's up to you. The key to successfully quilting these is using something to flatten the raw, loose edges to feed evenly under the presser foot. Here, I'm using a bone folder, but I've also used a nylon spudger, an orange stick, a chopstick, or a pin. Really, anything pointy and sacrificial in case the needle catches it will work. I try to keep my quilting at about a half inch spacing. Most of the pieces are at least a half inch in one direction, so at that density, every piece gets a little stitching to help secure it. Be sure to quilt all the way out to the edges. From here, you can square it out to frame whichever part is your favorite, bind it or face it, and add hanging loops or sleeves to the back to create a wall hanging. 
You can also cut it into postcard size pieces and turn it into quilted postcards. It can also be incorporated into a quilt as you go project for a larger wall hanging. The sky really is the limit from here. If you're interested in how I turn this into quilted postcards or more ideas on what to do with these, check out my blog post linked below. You can also find me on Instagram for more rainbow inspired quilting, also linked below. Thank you for hanging out here and sticking it out to the end. I don't know when I'll upload a new tutorial, but you can stay in the know by subscribing. Catch you later.